Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Today I want to talk to you about the real consumption of EVs. As we all know, when you drive an EV, there's a trip meter and it shows you your average consumption. But is that really true? First of all, is the car maker really showing a real number? Is the trip meter under-reporting, over-reporting? Possible because you don't know the only thing where you can be sure and this is what i'm talking about about uh, real consumption is what you really have to charge in the car for driving the distance and don't forget that now i have a youtube membership so if you want early access to video and information uh, behind the scenes and everything and then of course merch is now happening i will upload more and more different logos and it's on demand so i don't have to pre-order and it's really nice this hoodie is the premium hoodie it's really nice and soft warm though but now with the winter with the cold it's really nice of course there's a downside to it because when you charge a car you have charging loss so it's heat the charging is heating up the battery and then you have loss uh, during because of heat in the battery and in the charger and then of course uh, cars uh, when the battery is being heated up a lot it's cooling down the battery with a fan or even with ac so with a cooled uh, a fluid that is going through the battery to keep the battery as a, as a good temperature and this also takes energy but again you have to pay for it so the real consumption in my eyes is what you have to pay for 100 kilometers and luckily <laughs> i tested i had so far i had around 30 cars uh, that i test 30 evs and with 15 of those i made my rakobi test and rakobi is range consumption and best speed and what i do is i charge the car to 50 percent most of the time i stop myself some of the time i use the charge limit in the car <coughs> if it had that and if it worked so i charge to 50 percent drive a certain row uh, 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 route and come back to the same charger at 90 110 and 130 kilometers an hour gps speed and then i charge up to the 50 percent again so i know the kilometers and i know the kilowatt hours charged at the charger and except for in my my data that i'll show you in a second except for the nissan leaf e plus that i charge a cheddar on a triple charger with 50 kilowatt all the others were charged at ionity and again yes i know some cars that, that can charge with high power they will have uh, more charge loss and of course uh, the cooling of the battery but you have to pay for that this is the consumption uh, for you that you have to pay average consumption at those speeds and i did that with 15 cars and let's look at it and i'm getting a volkswagen id3 pure with the small battery we'll do range test and charging tests and everything this friday so subscribe so you don't miss that first here is my list uh, that what the car has shown and and it, it's very even possible that a, a few numbers here i i uh, adjusted because the car was under reporting over reported in, in, in a trip meter kilometer wise so i know that the average consumption is different but in the in the in the um uh, in the in the data that i show you in in a minute um for the for what i calculated what the real consumption was i used what the car was showing before and made a difference with that and as you can see i can go in the consumption rank at different speeds so this is 90 kilometers an hour this 110 and this 130 and the hyundai ionic is uh, number one on all of them <laughs> best consumption on all of them um and in, in, in e-golf is very close and model y is very good at 130 um but and you can see really good numbers but now let's go to my data and this is the data i got and how i did it as is i took the kilometers that i drove um and uh, most of the time 60 kilometers a few times i had to do a different route and you can see i have that here and then i filmed every time how many kilowatt hours were charged to not the perfect 
but almost at the same state of charge that I was when I was going. Yes, maybe I stopped charging uh, two seconds later or something like this. And of course, it was not always the exact same temperature. So you can see this uh, BMW i3s was at one degree and e-golf was at 30 degrees for example so that's a difference and as you can see this is the consumption i had in the car and this is my calculated consumption in green and this is at 90 110 and 130 and there are a few weird things so for example the kia a nero for whatever reason uh, at the charger it's 20 and a half percent more than what the car is showing i don't know why I couldn't tell you because when I look at the other other uh, uh, speeds, it's only eight percent and ten percent. I don't know why at ninety kilometers an hour it is this that high. I watch I watched the video, reviewed it, and this is what I charged. I charged eleven point zero eight kilowatt hours. I don't know why, and I know that I drove sixty four point three kilometers. I don't know, um, and. At the Hyundai Ioniq also had 17% at that speed, but then on the others, not so much. But that's just how, how the data they're shown. And when you go on the other side, the BMW i3s is almost the same as the car was showing. There's almost no charging loss. And now let's go to the ranking and you can see that now it's a bit different. Now the Mini Cooper is number one at 90 kilometers an hour. Uh, Ionic is still number one at 110 and the e up is number one at 130 and what I also have seen and this looks more consistent is Tesla Model Y 16% difference very consistent in all three numbers and as you can see as I look in those they're mostly very consistent I mean here 4.8 and then 8 here uh, but 6.7, 7 and 8 point, that looks okay. It's just a few things that were weird. Nissan Leaf, uh, uh, here only not even a percent, then 10 percent, then 14 percent. I mean, you always have to think at 130 kilometers an hour, of course, it used more state of charge and it had to charge more. And then it was a longer charging, maybe then battery cooling. With a Nissan Leaf, it got hotter, the battery got warmer and warmer each time. Maybe there was more heat loss then. It's possible, very likely even. Um, but as you can see, for example, here, EAP, it's always around 10%, 9 to 10%. That looks okay. Uh, Eagle 5, 7, and 7. Uh, my ID 3, 4.7, 5.4, 6.2. That sounds okay. Um, and uh, like I said, Model Y is also pretty consistent. Same Volvo XC40. Very consistent. Uh, they all have battery cooling, the one I've s just talked about. And the worst was the Kia Enero, which does not have it has has battery cooling but only with a fan not with with it can do fluid but it uh, it won't do it with with the charging power that it has they had there but it's very interesting that the number is just so different and then where model y was was pretty good with 123 is now 143 and it's just a different number and like i said at the 90 kilometers an hour tesla model y is now suddenly uh, at the eighth place here seven and here and here four and before tesla model y was six four and two uh, i i will put uh, this uh, uh, spreadsheet in the in the description so you can see it it's pretty good but that's it for me thank you much for watching have a great day and take care bye